Okay, for the Genesis G70 3.3, this is just how to get to the oil filter. It's actually pretty easy. So I went on to Amazon and got one of these shallow sockets. Uh, it's a 27 millimeter, and honestly, I don't even think you need that. This is what I got. Um, but I really think any 27 mil will work just fine. I don't think you need a shallow socket. I think it's okay. But in order to get to the filter, all you gotta do is get underneath. You don't even have to take off any of the covering. Um, let's turn on this light here. There you go. You have this little thing right over here. I already popped this little plastic rivet. You just take that out. And turn it like this. Super easy. <laughs> And then this guy right here, that's your oil filter cartridge or whatever you want to call it. It's all plastic, um, but that's the nut on top. It's plastic as well. And there's plenty of room up here. So I don't see why you can't just use any regular 27 millimeter socket. Um, so yeah, I'll show you the filter out next. Okay, so I got the filter out. Um, as you can see, I've got it kind of draining right in there. Let me show you how it looks first. Um, the shallow socket works great. Again, I don't think you need it. You may have to take off this cover though if you don't use a shallow socket. Let's take a look in there. There it is, yeah, kind of draining. There's that plastic cartridge. Um, okay, and then looking at filter. Here's the cartridge right over here. It's got a little metallic clip or something like that which plugs in right here and it keeps the filter on. I kind of cleaned it up a little bit and then there's a rubber o-ring right on here. And this is a filter that came with the car. Obviously male brand. Um, I guess that's the part number. Let's turn this thing off. Yeah. Made in Korea. Paper filter. It's got paper ends. Okay. Got oil on my phone. That's great. Anyways, so the filter I got is a Wix filter. And I got it for the Kia Stinger 3.3. So it has a moment of truth. Let's hope it fits. It should. Same engine. So there's the filter. It's the same height. This has plastic ends instead of the paper ones. So there's a little o ring in there. Same with on this side. They look like they're about the same size. Part number's on top of this, part number's on top here. You can see maybe South Korea. Oh, all right. There you go, South Korea. Whatever. This also comes with the O ring. Should we place that one right there? This little washer, I assume, is for the drain plug. We'll see. We'll find out. Um, so next I'm going to pause it and let's see if this filter actually fits on there. If it doesn't, I'll have to reuse the old one and just change the oil, but we'll see. All right, hang on. Okay, looks like it works. Just clips right in there, just like the old one did. did. Uh, on the inside you can see it has these little plastic frame whatever pieces. This one is also plastic on the inside too. It's got that plastic frame, those ribs on the middle. Otherwise, the rest is cardboard. At least the ends are cardboard. So there you go. Looks like Wix. Wix works. Sweet. All right. So let's check and see how easy it is to get to the the drain plug. I think we have to take off um, that bottom uh, drip pan panel, whatever it is. All right. Okay. Got the uh, oil filter back on. That uh, bolts in quite nicely. Oh, you can't see anything there. Um, put the new o-ring on, it fits really well. 
And then uh, to get to the drain bolt on the engine block, you got to take off this back panel. There's two panels underneath the car. This one has the nice little oil logo thing, whatever. Uh, six 10 millimeter bolts you take off. And then there is one uh, little plastic uh, cap. I forgot what these are called, whatever. Um, and that goes right here. So I'll take out the screws, pop this guy off, and then this thing just slides right out. Pretty easy. Um, and then I'll show you the drain bolt. Okay. Okay. I'll right over here. Sorry for my really crappy camera work. There it is right there. There's your drain plug. And you can see the front differential here with the front drive shaft going in there. And then you can see the front axles right over. Well, you can't really see that one. There it is, kind of. So just in case when you're ready to change that, that's right there too. Um, but here's the oil pan. Uh, it's a little flat oil pan gasket, so if you ever need to replace this, that actually looks pretty easy. It wouldn't be that hard, except for getting to these screws, but whatever, that's besides the point. Okay, so there's this, and that washer right there looks like it's the same size that came with my filter, so I think the Wix filter comes with a new crush washer, which is really nice. Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and drain this, and then we'll uh, go from there. Okay, draining the oil right now. Let's turn on the light here, you can, so you can see it. There it is. Yeah. Um, it looks pretty dark. I only have like 1,300 miles on the car, um, and this is factory oil. So, yeah. Um, here's the drain plug, and there is the old crush washer, nice thick aluminum. And it looks like the new one is pretty much exactly the same. So yeah, so this is a sweet little filter. Comes with the O-ring and then the crush washer for the drain plug. Um, yeah, pretty straightforward. Um, we'll start it up once I, well, I'll show you the new oil I'm putting in, then we'll start it up and that should do it. Okay, got drained all the oil. Um, took the car off the jack stands. So now it's time to refill the oil. So I'll show you what the manual suggests here. Engine oil, recommends Quaker State, Shell Helix, yeah, whatever. Um, so 3.3, 7.29 US quarts. And then this is the thing, I guess, A, C, E, A, A5 or above. Um, so what I decided to go with is Pennzoil Ultra Platinum Full Synthetic 5W30. And honestly, most full synthetic 5W30s will meet these requirements anyway, so I don't think it's that big of a deal to be honest with you. Um, but as you can see somewhere here, you'll probably see before I do. Okay, A, C, E, A, A1, B1, comma, A5, B5. So that's the big one, according to Genesis. I think there's probably better oils that you can get, but this one's pretty good. Um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and fill that up seven quarts so I'm going to use five with this thing I have a second one here and then I'll use just a couple a little over two quarts on this so I'll have a few quarts left so we'll pour that in and then we'll start her up oh yeah one more thing I forgot to mention this um, in the manual where it shows the capacities we we're just looking at you can also see the viscosity numbers right over here so for the 3.3 Genesis specifically recommends 5W30 or 10W30, again, ACEA, -A -E -A -A5 or above. Um, so yeah, but I read somewhere that the Stinger can also recommend higher viscosities like 5W40 and so on. So I don't know, same engine, you guys decide whatever you want. If you're pushing higher horsepower, it may not be a bad idea to go a higher viscosity, whatever, you do what you want. Okay, there it is. So filled it up with about seven and a half quarts of oil. Got to make sure you double check that oil dipstick. Make sure it's full. Um, started her up. It's running nice and smooth right now. Um, and just be, obviously, if you've never changed oil before, you may not know this, but when it first starts up, the oil pressure light will turn on just for like a second or two. And then it'll turn off. It's got to repressurize the whole system. As you can see, no warning lights or anything like that. 
running pretty smooth. Except for that beeping sound. So yeah, that's it. Let me know what you guys think.